Hi and good evening to all. I am Milan Bujwar from Kage and would like to begin today's webinar by showing my gratitude towards thanking NIPM Raigad and HR Shepard for their strategic partnership. Our industry partner PIM SME and our mental wellness partner Souls Connect. So before we move ahead, I would like to put forward some ground rules that will be followed throughout the session. So all the attendees mic are muted for avoiding any accidental disturbance. All the panelists are requested to mute themselves to avoid disturbance. We will have Q and A session towards the end of the webinar. Till then, if you have any questions, use Q and A section and type your question to moderator. We'll read the question and if found relevant, it would be answered. The webinar will be recorded. Hence, if you miss any point. We'll post that recording of the same after it's over. So, and now I would love to invite our host for the day, Mr. Ashish Gakri, founder of HR Shapers. He is well-known HR leader, speaker globally, connected, globally connected, social media influencer, blogger, Generation Z expert. Mentor, coach, take HR. HR Shapers is globally reached out HR associations body for knowledge sharing and networking. It has 25,000 HR members present in five regions, 25 countries, 50 locations worldwide. He has 20 years of diversified exposure from IT, ITS, telecom industry, and heavy rich experience of of organizations like Capgemini, Tele, Tele Performance, Loop Mobile, and Grid Consultant, Great Sales, and Max Search. He is the founder of MTHR Global and past president of HR Infotech Association. He was executive member, committee member of NHRD Mumbai chapter two times in a row, also awarded by SHRM India as an HR influencer in the Top 50 for two years, 2018 and 2019. In addition to playing influencer roles for various other leading HR associations of India, guest lecture faculty, and has been closely working with various B schools and E schools for several projects related to students' curriculum and progressive edu uh, education development. His expertise lies in HR strategy, HR transformation, digital HR savvy capability building, talent management, talent acquisition, learning and development, motivation, engagement, retention, HR, audit, compliance, and HR uh, share services. That's it from my end. Over to you, Ashish. Thank you, Milan. Thank you for so, so wonderful introduction. And, and thanks, thanks all the speaker. Uh, you know, uh, to to be agreed and uh, uh, accepted the invite to share the knowledge. Yes, topic is very interesting. So uh, we have been hearing a lot about, you know, uh, employee experience, but this is different, you know, which I'm coming across, which is more of employee welfare. You know, experience can can come if, if there is a welfare taking place. Great topic. Uh, yes. So so uh, let me let me share the schedule, you know, how the how the structure of uh, you know, this panel discussion going to take place for the next uh, two hours. Each speaker, so we have six speakers, six personalities from different, different fields and industries. And each one will be given 15 minutes to talk on the subject. And each one has a, has a different, different subject, which which is anywhere being circulated and all of you know. Uh, and last uh, uh, 25 minutes will be given for open Q&A. Okay, we are not taking any Q&A after immediately speech. So we need to wait till till the last session uh, uh, taking place. Yes, so so that is about the structure of the program. One by one, all the speaker will come. So one by one, you know, uh, for example, it will start with keynote. So Radha Krishnan Pillar, I will read the profile. Then Radha will take over. Then it will go to the next. So one by one, it will go till the last session. Okay, so here we come to the topic now. Uh, it's not much spoken about employee welfare because we are talking about something else in this pandemic, and and there are there are 
why we are talking about employee welfare rather i would say you know we need to talk about the human welfare because there are there are lot of a lot of many other things happening which is you know disturbing uh, the 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 human being actually not as an employee because it's going beyond the employee where you know family being affected there are so many job losses taking place layoff is happening you know there is a then mental issues health issues and all yes i'm all talking about the negative thing but there are various positive things happening Uh, there are various new industries coming up and government also coming up with lot of you know different different kind of policies and all hr is definitely responsible for hr related activities but they are doing much more now they are getting into business part of it because you know if they don't do it then who will do it so even even ceos also doing lot of hr work hr work is also doing lot of uh, hods and ceo work okay so i will pause here because you know there is a time limitation and we have six speaker i want to give a time to each each one of them so that you know audience get the uh, very very informative and uh, knowledge sharing uh, speech yes so let me start with uh, dr radha krishnan pillai he is a keynote for today uh, welcome radha so radha not only friend of mine but he is friend of entire hr fraternity he is friend of hr shafer as well so i know radha since last uh, if i'm not wrong radha is 15 years almost uh, so very beautiful memory with radha yes so he is author we all know as a, he is the chanakya guru and uh, author chanakya niti he holds phd degree from university of mumbai there is a lot of research on kotelya apshas from the chinmay international foundation kerala under the guidance of uh, dr kangan dharan nayar who is the dean of adi shankara sanskrit university he is mn in sanskrit he is known for his international best selling book he does lot of book he is writing lot of book you must have seen every month or i think every quarter he is writing one book he is tedx tedx speaker he keep engaging himself in, in lot of session you know with various social platform and all so recently he is being honored with a lokmat and national education leadership award as a best professor in philosophy he is rated among the top 30 indian management thinker globally he has shared the stage with most of the most of the social gurus most of the social uh, expert i will pass here radha and uh, over to you radha is going to talk upon employee welfare management post covid Uh, uh th- thank you ashish i'm audible okay uh thank you a warm good afternoon to each one of you it's already evening time now thank you for all the organizers especially to milan and ashish as he said is a really dear friend he knows radha uh, before corporate chanak and post corporate chanak yeah and uh, ashish has been a part of my personal journey uh, from hr to now leading lot of companies thank you ashish and of course milan for making me part of this session also my uh, salutations to all the speakers over here dr rajan sir jayshree ma'am jeevan sir anand sir with whom i share another common surname uh, and of course we have uh, kangan ma'am and all other speakers who are here uh, please accept my salutations and thanks for inviting me as a keynote speaker i'm quite aware of the time limitation that we have but i have always believed about a narad muni story once it is said that narad muni by the way narad muni was the guru of chanakya also so he used to go everywhere and give lectures on hari bhakti and he used to you know take all the rakshasas also on the devata side so one rakshas got very angry with him that you come to my place you actually you know uh, i give you an entry into my kingdom without visa and you convert everybody into your team so i am going to give you a sharp what is that sharp that you will not be able to stay in any place for more than 2 minutes and says then and so that you, know, you don't convert people into hari bhakti so you just be asura there and narad bhakti smiled and said you know if i really want to change somebody and have to give my thoughts i don't require a lot of time even 2 minutes is enough <laughs> so my dear friend i think we as speaker should also understand the exit time before we enter so i would say that you know 15 minutes is much more than enough at one end but the other side you know 15 minutes is nothing in front of chanakya's wisdom but then uh, i am always clear that you know uh, the time given to me that i have to stop by 4:20 so right from uh, now we have got almost 11 minutes to go so what i'm going to do i'm going to speak on the topic the topic given to me is employee welfare management post covid era using chanakya niti 
So friends, uh, first of all, let me tell you the post COVID era. How is it going to be? None of us know <laughs> because none of us expected a COVID era, and we are just imagining. Neither the governments, neither the uh, corporate world, neither the medical fraternity, no economist knows what's going to happen the post COVID era. Yet, yet we can be prepared for the uncertainties. That is where Chanakya comes in. If you are preparing everything for certainties, then you don't require Chanakya. So I would just place a few of my thoughts, and as I told you, this is a future imagination. The reality could be totally different. So, friends, um, the two things. If you look at the topic, employee welfare. Unfortunately, today, instead of employee welfare, we are doing farewell to employees. So that itself is one of the major challenges. You know, a lot of people who have been committed to you, working with you for 20, 20 years. You know, they have been told Tata, bye bye. Now we don't have money, so you take care of yourself. I think that is where probably the first uh, principle of leadership comes in. I don't think it's COVID era. It is actually what is your mindset? How do you want to uh, manage your employees? At one end, we also see you know people losing their jobs, but the reality is that we also seen people getting jobs and also getting increment and promotions. To quote an example, uh, Asian Paints actually declare incentives for their employees. and many people think it's only the digital and the social media related organizations that get benefit no it is actually the attitude of the leader if he decides or she decides to keep the employees they will be there if they decide no that's a right time to chuck out employees then you don't have employee welfare then it just gets into a legal game you know i know of a very very senior person who was working for a company for 20 years almost at the cfo level and in a multinational company and overnight he was told you know tata bye bye and he said you know just give me at least one day to think they actually showed him a legal paper saying that we have this thing that we can let you go any time you want 20 years so i think finally the first principle that chanakya would say that you know forget the legal part of it look at the compliance part of it whatever it is what's your attitude towards your employees chanakya would say praja sukhe sukham ragya praja naam chahite hitam you should look at the happiness of your people praja ke sukh mein raja ka sukh hai but if you think mere sukh mein nobody is included so you have to expand your vision towards not just your employees but everyone around you so i read something very beautiful which said in good times we make money in good times we make money and in bad times we take care of a family so this is bad times challenging times so are you thinking it's an employee or is a family member so think about them as your family and of course leadership is the first thing now coming back to some corporate examples i've been working on this particular thing for the last almost everybody over here is a speaker on various platform but you know the interesting part is speakers can also be the first listeners i've been learning a lot and i got a sense of what's happening so i will share a few thoughts on it the first one is that employees will still remain post covid era so don't think that there will be organization without employees artificial intelligence may have an impact but artificial intelligence cannot change natural intelligence we still require human beings employees will remain of course farewell will welfare will also remain okay so it will go through some change and today we are going through something called as business process reengineering so you know a lot of people are thinking about laws and we have an expert here you know dr saab will actually telling you what are the international laws work from home and home based work the two different things okay work from home is an it's like you know you're also working from home but home based work is maybe you're actually the main base is home so a lot of real estate people are saying that's an opportunity for us we can actually have one room which can be converted into an office so everybody can have individual room so you know uh, dr saab will be actually talking about uh, how things can be there as a legal perspective i'm not a legal perspective i'm not a compliance person but i would definitely change that post covid era lot of new things will be happening for employees let me give you a specific example you know uh, i've been working very closely with tca tata consultancy service in the last two months and you would be surprised uh, they actually have made a formal announcement and that is 2025 that is five year plan 75% of the employees will be work from home and only 25% employees will be actually working from office interestingly interestingly this was not a policy for covid era this was a planning that was going on and when tata or tcs does it for four and a half like employees others should also learn from this So I would suggest you know all the HR people look around. Ki what are the new policies getting made? And TCS can be an Indian example. And you know Microsoft is making another statement. The Google is making another statement. I don't know. The manufacturing will have its own impact. But definitely post COVID era, lot of business process reengineering would happen. What is very very important is also to make sure that your business becomes profitable. 
I think this is one suggestion I always give to HR people. Finance for non-finance people. So finance for HR people. You may be very good in HR, but let me tell you, please learn budgeting. You know, we know employee cost cutting, saying that if, if money is not there, cash flow is not there. I request all the HR heads and decision makers, please get into the boardroom. Don't just be in engagement of employees. Okay, it's very important to learn some finances because finally, as Chanakya says, Artha Eva Pradhanaha. Finally, we are all in business and business is about profitability. So we can say, you know, it's about stakeholder, it's about employees, but finally for even employees, you need to pay money. That's why the best thing about even Asian paints, which gave increment, they're debt free company. Please note this particular point that debt free, that's where they can give. If you don't have cash flows. So I think every HR person should start putting the hat of being a finance guy, at least from now onwards. If you're a good financial guy, you'll be a good HR guy. And every good HR guy should learn finance. So this is one of the suggestions. In the next five minutes, I'm going to give you some of the points of HR and Chanakya Niti. Okay, there are, I've uh, made four points as four takeaways for all of you. So this comes from Chanakya Niti and Kautilya Arthashastra, which was written almost 2,400 years ago. The first point, okay, Chanakya actually spoke about employee welfare in factories. Of course, you know, more of manufacturing and all those things. He also spoke about something called as sexual harassment at workplace, which is like a very new thing today. But the reality is that in Arthashastra, we have employee welfare, employee schemes already written. So if you're interested, you know, you can get in touch with me separately or you can read my books. But the idea is that for India or for Chanakya, for that matter, employee welfare is not a new thing. But what is going to happen definitely is that the laws are going to change. Think about half of your employees working from home. You may think, you know, it's not a factory, it's not an office, I don't care. But you'll have to look into cyber laws now because the cyber crimes can grow up. So maybe physically people may not have much of uh, challenges, but you know, if your computer is getting hacked, it has to be an HR problem. If somebody is getting, you know, uh, a cyber message and they are getting uh, harassed, it will become an HR problem. So I would suggest that, you know, new laws will get formed as far as the new technology is concerned. So one suggestion is to look at what is going to happen in finance, but also look at what is going to happen in the digital infrastructure because a lot of people are moving into digital platform. So a lot of employee welfare can happen from there. A very simple example, you know, if your Wi-Fi, which you're using at home can be sponsored by the company itself. You know, a lot of people already have started demanding that even though the travel expenses are going down, the electricity is going to. So maybe one employee welfare is that, you know, thousand rupees per person for your Wi-Fi and electricity. I don't know. So think about the digital impact that's going to happen and you have to budget that also. So Chanakya made laws in Arthashastra. We'll have to make new laws for employee welfare. The second one is very important, which I personally practiced. Never fight a battle alone. Take some friends along. Because, you know, all of us are going to be in this. You know, we are all in different organizations, different companies, different geographies. But, but, but this is a challenge across the globe for the whole HR fraternity. Be in touch with everyone. So, you know, here we are networking, learning from experts, but be in touch. So if you have a problem in your company, just lift up a phone call and say, I don't know what to do with this employee. I don't know what to do with that employee. My boss is telling me something else. What do you do? Pick up a phone call. Even Amitabh Bachchan used to say, you know, in crisis, phone a friend. So it's very important that it's not going to be one rule. There could be multiple rules, but learn from each other. Chanakya always believed that we have to fight out the battle together. So have more friends, network better. Initially, we networked as HR fraternity. Today, we have to network to make new HR policies together. That's the second formula. The third one, which is very, very popular, Samadana Danda Veda. A very, very popular Chanakya Niti. You will have to deal with employees in a new method. Initially, in a factory, if you're working, the productivity can be easily measured. They'll be having a login time, then the productivity is measured. There are KPIs, KRAs, what do you call it? Everything is going to change. Okay, because in the digital world, when somebody is sitting at home or even if somebody is sitting in the factory, okay, their whole process of measurement will go different. And when I say when you're looking at productivity, you'll also have to have discipline. So that's where Samadana Danda Veda. How do you make people productive and disciplined? Because you know, you may just log in into a computer and you know come back after two hours. But the reality is that you know they may not be actually working. So all of you know this technical problem. So in the whole way, we may have to new formulas to ensure productivity with some discipline. And that's where law comes in. You know, think about those kind of a productivity also. The fourth and the last important thing, the focus will be 100% on productivity and efficiency. People don't care. Anyway, in the normal, in the knowledge workers, people don't care how many hours you are put in. 
people may say i'm working for 14 hours i'm working for 12 hours initially it was 8 hours but i'll tell you already with the mobile technology nobody counts your productivity by the number of hours even including factories okay so if you're a boss at a senior management level you're 24 by 7 we need to look at new methods of measuring productivity and efficiency and that's where the opportunity is also there people don't care where you're working how you're working therefore we will be only caring about results 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 chanakya was very clear very very clear he was a practical philosopher okay so he's saying the results finally matter results finally matter so i like to sum up my keynote address by telling my dear friends we will go through the change but let us go through the change together. We will have a new world post COVID era. But remember, that is the world that we create. Don't wait for the world to get created and enter it. The good news is that all of us as a generation has an opportunity to create a new world together. So let us go together. I don't say fight the battle alone because that's a very negative word. Let us play the game of life and the game of the corporate world together. And together we will emerge as winners. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Radhas, for a wonderful keynote. You know, many things coming out, you know, I can uh, sum up, but won't take much time. Like, you know, work from home, you are touch up on and very interesting uh, topic will be covered by uh, Rajan, sir, on work from home. So we'll wait for, uh, wait from, uh, you know, all the input from his side. Then learning from home is you talk about crisis, then business process and uh, re-engineering will take place. Network is one of the most important. We are doing networking. We are getting more opportunity to ne network in the COVID era, utilize the time and all. And most of the company anyway announced, you know, like work from home for entire year of 2020. Some of them, they said, you know, mid of the 2021. Then some some coming and saying you work from home is not productive. But yes, it's, it's too early to react and take any decision. Let, let the, let's go with the flow. Okay, so before spending much time, because every every speaker has a you know certain time limitation. Okay, uh, I need to play devil advocate, advocate role. Uh, thanks, Milan. Uh, I forget to uh, you know congratulate you to bring you know so many speakers from a different different uh, field. Yeah, an entire team you know who have put in all this effort to make it happen. And uh, okay, so here is the next uh, topic, which is work from home. It's here to stay. What are the implications? We are all uh, victim of work from home. We are all benefited from work from home. And and the speaker for uh, today who will talk on this topic is you know none other than Rajan Malhotra. He is the former senior specialist of employer activity of South Asia region with ILO. And person who has worked with ILO, nobody can challenge him. I have attended a lot of his session, not only during this, but sir, before 10, 15 years when you were with SEC and other companies. Uh, he has over four decades of international civil services, industry, academy experience. He was former senior specialist of employer activity for South, East, South Asia region, which I just said, and, and former corporate HR head with SEC, former corporate uh, head of manufacturing and HR with Novartis India. He was independent director on the board of Swiss multinational Novartis from 2000 to 2020. Uh, he is presently visiting faculty in uh, various IMs, and every month he writes a topic of industrial uh, relation IR and human resource management for monthly publication, current labor report. Uh, nobody can challenge him, as I said, you know, as far as uh, IR is concerned, sir. Thank you so much for uh, taking out time. I attended recently your NIPM session also, another one. Uh, so, so it was, it was very informative. Even, and this is a different topic you'll be touching upon and I'm sure it will be very knowledge sharing. Work from home, I don't want to talk much on this. Let's hear from uh, Rajan Malhotra. Rajan Malhotra, yeah, sorry. Thank you, Ashish, for the nice word you have spoken. My fellow panelists, Radhakrishnan, Jayashri, Jeevan, Anand, Kangan, also Milan, who got in touch with me. This webinar is on employee welfare management. But what is, I have been asked by the organizers is to speak. Work from home, is it here to stay? And what are the implications? And my answer is, yes, it is here to stay. And I look in terms of it, what is work from home, how it started. Now, if you look at home-based work, which is something Radhakrishna Pillai also mentioned, in India, he's historically evolved. 
from the craft production activity where individual household members acquired the skill from their parents and produced products. And this is traditional. They were using bamboo, grass, leaves, flowers, wood, cotton yarn, synthetic yarn, silver thread, gold thread, which is called jari, fire, leather, mud, clay, terracotta, ceramic, glass, metallic minerals, cotton, milk, paper, mache, others. I'm not getting into the details. Now, when you look at this, this is something that is prevalent in various parts of this country. When I get down to it, I look at chicken work, which is done in Lucknow. It's all done at home by people. When you look in terms of Chanderi from Madhya Pradesh, when you look at bangles in Firozabad, while there are factories that make bangles, but please be clear, it's a coiled bangle. And when it is warped, it has to be melted on the 180 degree side. And all the decoration on glass bangles is done at home. These are all home-based activities. And I am referring to manufacturing activities done at home. This is a concept that is still prevalent, still works. When you get down hand embroidery items of Kashmir, look at the amount of hand embroidery items that used to come from Kashmir. I'm not getting into the political angle, but yes, that's a type of business which is done in homes. I mean, look at Karnataka, their Bidri work, which is also done at home. Bastar has metal items, which is called bell items. Look in terms of Maharashtra from where we are all. The Paiti Sari comes from there. The Kolaburi Chappal comes from there. Why I'm trying to bring this out is, I myself in my ILO career did a lot of work on home-based workers. And when I look in terms of home-based work, National Sample Survey Organization in India compiled this. We are all just because we are in the corporate sector and have started working for more try and look at it and come out with this as a concept. But let's see what really happens. When you look in India itself in terms of the NSSO data, 2011 to 12, the figures that are 37.45 million people work from home, of which 20.5 is in rural areas, 16.05 is in urban areas. When you look at male, female, 21.4 million are men, 16.05 are women. Now, why I tried to bring this out is suddenly because COVID-19 has taken place. We have started my childhood days. I have been born and brought up in the city of Mumbai. I used to live in King Circle and I recollect while going to school, my parents wanted me to learn drawing. So I used to go to one Rajaram classes who would teach drawing in his house. Now, what has happened traditionally People that were self-employed, like writers, poets, translators, all of them work from home. Residents come, work was the way there. Except the difference was that people visited in their house, got it done. Not only I as a child that have studied, I also see my grandchildren going to learn at home, music, chess playing, others. What has happened in COVID-19, this has totally changed. And I'm bringing out this informal sector activity for a simple reason that I had a yoga teacher that used to come three days in a week. Then when COVID-19 started, quite a few people gave up that he can't do it. I then told him, why don't you do it from your residence and I will do it at my place. Then he saw it work, then he started. What has recently happened is that this youngster living in Bombay was finding it tough, has moved to Uttarachal where he's gone. And he's from there doing it. Now, I'm just saying that how activities and how people are changing. What is really happening is that when this was raised by Radhakrishnan Pillai, when he said, you know, that home-based work. Now, let me tell you, home-based work has been defined by ILO, the International Labor Organization, and as a convention 177 of 1996. And home-based work is defined by ILO as work carried out by a person in his or her home or in another premise of his or her choice, other than a place work of the employer, irrespective of who provides the equipment, material, or other input, unless this person has degree of autonomy. The second National Commission of Labor 
Mr. Ravin Verma, in his report, when he looked at the informal sector, had asked government of India to ratify this convention and bring all this in terms of the workforce. This has not taken place. When you look at law of the land today, BD worker, there's an act itself, BD workers work from home. What has happened when you come in the urban sector and because of COVID-19 taking place, we have now started saying, is this valid or not valid? And yes, it is true that a new form of employment has emerged in it. Now, when you look at this type of new employment that has occurred, prior to COVID, it was there, Hit time was there, Slack was there, Zoom was there, Google was there. Some people used to use it. Post 25th March, this became a necessity and people started working. But what has happened when you do this in terms of a conversion, certain sectors have got affected very badly. There are certain sectors which can use this certain sectors. Now, if I'm making cement or I'm making steel, I cannot get it made at home. The product has to be made in a factory. So I need a workforce. So one needs to recognize that work from home is possible in certain sectors of the economy. Work from home has limitations in certain sectors of the economy. At the same time, one needs to see what will be the answers. But the reality is since that the theme working from home is a reality, it will stay and it will have its implications. One needs to recognize the implications of work from home for a simple reason. Most of us live in residences which are not designed as an office. When you look at various chambers, look in terms of hundred accountant, they had an office. Now, when you have four people, if I am a husband, wife that is working, I have two children that were going for school, they can't. And if all four have to sit on a computer, do I have four tables? I must admit that I am myself working from home and speaking to you, but for convenience, I am sitting on a dining table and speaking. Now, these are hard realities that one has to look at it. While technology has grown because of the internet connectivity in this country, so people have mobile, people have also laptops, so we are able to operate on a webinar. But when I look at a large, large number of people, children that were going to municipal school, they are not in a position, the parents can't afford this. And this is going to become the major problem which I see for the children. Those of us who are economically better off, yes, can handle all this. Now, these are implications that will come up in this economy. And somewhere, government of India needs to look at working from home as a new concept. And what is there? If I look at labor laws in this country, there is no definition of work from home. It is only in the Maternity Act where recently it was amended where the limits from six weeks were raised to six months, 26 weeks. What has happened is it has been defined that women after their maternity leave can stay back and work from home if an employer defines. But work from home has not been defined under law. At the same time, there are points that Radha Krishnan brought up that there will be cyber crime. How do you stop people from pilfering data? These are going to become actual issues. What is the work schedule that they follow? Are they... I can switch, there can be a participant that can put on and not listen to this and say that I am attending. These are problems that come up because I teach. And when I teach at the IIMs, I will conduct an exam and I'll tell you what are the problems really work from home when you look at it. I had set the paper, this was just 10 days back, the exam was taking place for one of the IIMs. 240 students were on it, I set the paper. They were also monitoring the attendance. They were monitoring whether one of the boys suddenly phoned me up, sir, my stream is not working. He was panicking. So I said, I said, don't worry. I can realize internet connectivity problems can be there. You send a message, I'll help and sort it out. Now, this is reality. Please be clear. While we all talk of technology, we are better located. I have a brother that lives in a village in Indore. Let me tell you, I have a tough time speaking to him on Skype also. Internet connectivity is not there. Let's be clear. Now, it is not that everywhere. Most of us live in metropolitan, work in an IT industry and think from that. Now, these are some of the repercussions that will happen. There will be disturbances. There is a concept of small office, home office, Soho. Not most of us have it, but this is something that we'll have to look. 
I also see implications because absence of interaction, all in bondage, and HR people invariably do employee engagement by three methods. One is individual level, other is small group activity, and third is last group activity. At the individual level, it is easier to do this. But when you look at small group activity, large group activity, they will have to innovate that how they can take this up. Because I clearly see the new normal will be different from the present normal. And yes, work from home will remain. Post COVID, whether it is going to be 12 months, 18 months is not known. But this is going to become a new form of work. Just like the fixed term contract is the new form of employment that is being brought under the labor code. This is something that has just arisen. The labor code does not look at this because I would look at work from home for two angles. It's not only the executive, you need to look at all category of employees. At the same time, welfare measures for work from home will have to be looked at. Positive angles are all known. We save on transport travel. Well, I've taken exactly 15 minutes. And with this, I would like to stop. Thank you. We can't hear you. You're on mute. Sorry. So thank you, sir. Thank you for, you know, uh, ice breaking session, especially related to this topic. And, you know, uh, I, I I would say eye opening a uh, lot of data you have presented. And, you know, it's it's luxury for most of us because we stay in the metro. But it's not luxury for many of uh, people, you know, outside uh, metro city, remote area and all. But yes, there are everybody is working from my start from government officer. Empl employee, employer, CEO, celebrities, everybody is working. Yeah, we need to provide good ecosystem for rest of them who are not working. Okay, thank you so much for, for wonderful session. Please be there, sir. We'll have a lot of questions for you. Uh, let me move to the next one. And it's a very interesting topic. We talk about the welfare management. Now we'd like to hear uh, from our speaker, you know, that what are the challenges in uh, employee welfare? So, so here is our third speaker. Let me read the profile. Yeah, so, so uh, Jayashree Mangesh uh, Katkar, she is Associate Vice President, uh, HR, Deepak Fertilizer and Petrochemical. Uh, she has her paper published on improving uh, the employ employability of young star in 2013. She, she has held various prestigious positions such as uh, Vice President, Taloja Manufacturing Association has been a member of Mahila, Dakshata Committee, Navi Mumbai, and uh, then she's member of a sexual harassment committee, director of industrial safety and health, CBD. She has been facilitated by, uh, with, with the SHE 2019 award by Punyangri awarded with the HR excellence, then award by Western Region NIPM Mumbai, and then uh, best HR practices award thrice from NIPM for the organization. Uh, she has published a lot of articles and uh, now she we would like to hear from uh, jashi very interesting topic that what are, what are the challenges because you know we are talking about welfare we are talking about work from home some of most of us we are saying opportunity but let's hear the challenges on so over to you jashi now yeah thank you very much first of all many thanks to milan because uh, he put a lot of efforts to invite all of you and it's a great opportunity to be on the panelist with our great uh, guru, I can say in IR, uh, Sri Rajan Mehrotra sir, because we keep hearing from him all the time. And today I have an opportunity to share a dais with him. Uh, I can say this is a great reward for me. And uh, also uh, an opportunity to share dais with Radha ji. I heard him number of times. I don't... Uh, I don't know whether he remember me uh, because we met a uh, number of times on NIPM uh, platform. So also uh, very good evening to my co-panelists here and uh, thanks Akshay Ashish ji. So we, I heard uh, Radha ji, I also Rajan ji always speak with data, no doubt, and we get a lot of learning. Please go behind, uh, we can go start with first slide only. Uh, we talk about lot of things and uh, I really like the concept where Radha ji mentioned how it is correlated with Chanakya Niti. 
and uh, while uh, talking he mentioned welfare or farewell see today's covid scenario many of the employees are facing farewell and not welfare uh, but uh, see I, I will take over to talk about what are the changes that has brought in in welfare practices basically when we talk about the manufacturing sector as i am associated with manufacturing sector see last few months we are going through it with a very experiencing a great change in this uh, pandemic situation our life is changing no doubt the change is uh, the rule of nature uh, but the today's scenario is no bhuto no bhavishyati we never thought of this challenge the hr people or mainly the employee relation or ir people they keep on discussing the strategies for probable uh, risk or probable challenges we might face but none of us never thought of this challenge and this has come on of a sudden so with this how the things are going to change or rather during this last 3 4 months what are the changes happen how we have got a shift over the welfare practices which we were doing uh, pro covid and post covid so i request uh, to move for next slide so i have just put a quote that every organization hear what employees say many good organization listen to what employees want to say or have to say but there are organization uh, they generally look for the employees welfare schemes and listen what employees don't say so that talks about the culture of the organization we can move ahead so when we are talking about the cultural shift or the many changes over the period has happened during this covid uh, pro covid uh, generally the industries were talking about or thinking about the welfare facilities generally this facilities related to your factory act maybe some intra mutual facilities some some are the extra mutual facilities you can click so you can get some attribute some are the statutory facilities and some are mutual facilities so as per factory act you need to have a high health and hygiene in properly maintaining the factory premises or your industrial area you should have a good housekeeping place where uh, where workplace is neat and clean you should have proper lighting and a good uh, condition where people will feel fresh but there is a there are some mutual uh, we can say extra mural facilities where we keep add on some like housing facilities uh, training programs we can introduce some employee connect or bonding programs we can introduce some sports so these are on mutual basis we are doing again there are some statutory compliances which industries need to comply with like you should have a, a full place canteen for your employees you should have changing room rest room you should have grievance redressal system you should have washrooms and there are some mutually agreed facilities like there should be transportation facility because people keep traveling from distance we should have a waste settlement reward and recognition leave somewhere it is maybe five day working six day working people talk about sometimes housing loan some subsidy on housing loan festival advances and some wellness policy so this was the scenario we can talk about pro covid now when we talk about what are the changes taking place during this covid period or post covid so what this may be we can move ahead so now when we talk about this pandemic situation this covid situation which has led many organization to invest hugely we can say it is a huge investment today to help their workforce to deal with this current crisis it is not a small thing because when we talk about it may looks like a small thing but there are many changes have happened over the period of time an organization has to do lot of investment into this so the uh, you can again click so few more uh, boxes will come bus so when we the organization has to talk about covid 19 and to lead with the uh, face with the challenges and has to uh, introduce new norm normals 
the industry has to adopt different philosophies to deal with the covid they have to sustain the operations so how to deal with different philosophies have been adopted and then i have uh, shown it in a three different angles one how to respond industries or the organization how they have responded with the situation to manage this scenario and to have continuity in their operations while responding this how to recover from the situation because when the begin uh, covid scenario started there was a lot of uh, stress uh, crisis challenges and to respond to the challenges and to recover from this lot of things required to learn we have to emerge with new philosophies and to become more and more stronger to face this challenge and while adopting this philosophy we have to thrive by preparing and shaping new normals so with when this triggered the many changes it also triggered to change and improve into employee welfare management so what are the new normals for this or what are the new approaches for this employee welfare management we can move ahead so when this covid 19 uh, came into india it started in china or other countries much before but uh, it started with us i think february it started i got this graph from uh, government site only and it started slowly slowly from february from february to march april may june july the graph went on increasing so it is still on increasing shape somewhere it is down somewhere it is in high shape so with this there is a shift brought in in employee welfare or i can name it as a employee wellbeing so when we talk about employee wellbeing as uh, radha ji has mentioned somewhere ki people are the biggest assets and we need to think for people uh, before we think for our business if tomorrow people won't exit how can we run our businesses so we need to think for people we have to sustain them we have to support them and we have to care for them so while caring for people or doing well being of our own employees i feel we should think in two different angles one can be uh, our physical well being which we should talk about uh, which government has set up some norms and other can be a mental well being when we talk about physical well being today anywhere not in only organization at our home society market wherever we go we need to maintain social distancing so it has come out like that social distancing layout so even if it is a cafeteria if it is a office it is a punching area everywhere you have to mark and you have to put squares or round circles where your employee can stand with the distancing and you have to maintain social distancing so again it is a new norm we can say wearing nose mask see earlier we were uh insisting employees to wear helmet wherever they they go inside the factory premises or they have to wear dust mask where they are entering into the uh, actually operation area but today without nose mask you cannot enter anywhere and lot of innovative uh, thinking has also introduced for this nose mask earlier it was people were just uh, tying up with the scarf or handkerchief today lot of innovative nose masks have been introduced in the market it has also given lot of business to uh, a small scale industries also even the ladies sitting at home also then hand sanitizer i remember in my childhood days my mother used to say haath pao do ke aana without that i will not serve you the food after uh, i come to my young age or today's scenario Uh, i don't feel we have followed that very strictly and uh, even we eat with spoons or forks and we forgot our old culture which have no covid has brought back so without having your hand sanitized you are not allowed to do anything it is not only eating it is for each and every your action you need to follow the sanitization then 
Uh, the health checkup, if industries you have to do six monthly, yearly, annual health checkup, today the norms are different. Today the concept of health check checkup is also changed. Then fogging, disinfection, and uh, now the public transport is not at place. So how your employees will travel? So you need to sustain uh, their um, journey and you have to support them by providing the extending bus routes. Today you may be saying, before COVID it may be up to certain location, but now you have to extend till their dormants. So this has changed again. Then this disinfection sprays, you have to uh, spray everywhere in your cabins. We have introduced a Dettol or Savalon based spray at entry gate where our people can get spray when they come or enter. This gives them confidence that we are getting disinfected. Then with weekly health checkup, we introduce at the priority, but now we have converted it into daily health checkup where you check, you get checked with oxy level, your oxy level, pulse rate, your temperature. So at entry level only you, you will be checked. Then you have to give your declaration form whether you have came into contact with anybody uh, who has got cough, cold fever, or you have you come in contact with any COVID case, have you travel? So this all history help you to keep you safe in this COVID scenario. And this now has become a new norm. So transport your vehicle also should be sanitized. So this has again changed the scenario. Then we have introduced uh, many other facilities which help employees to feel very confident while working. Like we have introduced hot pot at every place wherever our people are working in the factory premises, like your control rooms, uh, your uh, workshop areas. We also provided steamers to, in, all, in between they can take the steams, uh, provided vitamin medicine, salt water for gargling, then uh, healthy milk, that is gold. Golden milk is now a new concept. Earlier in uh, industries, milk and eggs were provided for their health. Now, golden uh, milk is a new concept. Uh, when we talk about the mental well-being, it is none of them. You should be in touch with your employees. You should have awareness session. We, we started since beginning. Our medical officer is in touch with each and every employee. We have provided help desk. So weekly communication, constant dialogue, periodical communication from the desk of our president level. Then counseling with and anything going wrong at their family level and how we can support them if they are having any COVID patient or they have some suspicion. So proper guidance. Then online yoga sessions. Work from home policy, uh, Rajan sir has talked a lot about work from home. Manufacturing sector, it was a never possible story in the beginning, but now it is a, a, a thing which has happened and can be continued in future also. So things which were never possible uh, previously now started. Then uh, the counseling session. Uh, recently we have introduced uh, Mitra. Uh, Mitra is a, a we have appointed one uh, external counselor for employees and their families. And the families and employees can get connected with uh, this uh, external vendor and uh, can get counsel whenever they, they feel stress or they are having uh, issues. Uh, because due to this COVID scenario, people are disturbed. Their mindset is in different, uh, we can say the different state of mind and uh, they are facing a lot of challenges. They are stressed because what will be the future. In that scenario, uh, it's required to be counseled to the employees and uh, handhold them. So this is what I can say different welfare facilities post COVID also will remain and many more changes will be introduced because every day there are a lot of changes. We can move ahead. I have few many slides only here to show this, some uh -huh. pictures. How we are working. I will take only two minutes. I know I have taken a, um, much time here. Yeah, just, so, we just need to start the next one. Yeah. Yeah, it's two minutes only. So, how we are doing sanitization, we can go ahead. It all workplaces 
then again uh, go ahead please see uh, how we are maintaining social distancing checking the uh, doing the health check please go ahead uh, i can only want to introduce how we were doing training sessions before covid and now all virtual meetings even our uh, worker union level workmen also joining a uh, virtual meetings virtual training session this is a big shift in the work working style i can say next so reward and recognition earlier in person now you can see it is uh, again virtual and even we connect family members so it has given joy to family member because the employees get rewarded uh, in their presence next so few more things earlier facilities locker uh, water cooler now we have to give the hot water pot uh, your uh, steamers the covid uniforms these are the new facilities we have to give now i think uh, it this this can be a last slide ki the compliances earlier the compliances like we have to uh, submit the compliances as per the factory act some return some inspection but now the norms are different you have to uh, this is counseling compliance will come later slide i have talk about counseling so we can go ahead uh, last slide uh, the compliance is also changed frequent guidelines are changing every day uh, you will get from your municipal corporation you will get from district collector and also from central and state government and accordingly you have to comply so norms keep changing and we have to keep changing and sustain during this covid and post covid period thank you very much for giving an opportunity all again csr post and pre covid csr activities also change so just for a look right. yeah yeah Fine. thanks thanks jaisi i think you you have a lot of lot to share and covid is uh, you know making us a uh, lot of work though in in a positive i would say uh, so it has given the message uh, overall that you know cleanliness is very much important the hygiene factor be uh, well responsible informed citizen take care of yourself and surrounding great session jashi please be there okay so without wasting yeah. much time because uh, time is running uh, i mean we are running short of time so here is the next speaker and the next speaker let me say ki, you know uh, he is he is a mentor coach and you know the the guider for uh, milan milan if i am not wrong you worked with him right uh so uh let me read the profile jivan sir i will cut it short but yes i will read important point on your profile so so jivan verma leadership coach change facilitator former bphr of reliance communication he is a complete uh, facilitative leadership trainer master trainer and coach with wide experience of 30 years three decades wow his expertise lies in bringing his own leadership experience while heading hr and lnd in india and abroad for some of the top fortune 500 organization he was vp hr and lnd for enterprise business of reliance as we said and prior to that he was vp hr for uh, asian region for general motor he has held leadership role in various organization like scl tcs dell general electric star tv such a rich experience of uh, jivan and here is uh, jivan verma is talking about the employee learning is it the end of classroom teaching very interesting topic guys please stay on over to you jeevan am i audible yes sir you are audible okay great uh, thank you very much uh, ashish and uh, thank you milan uh, uh, i had the uh, the privilege and honor of working with uh, milan almost 12 years ago uh, when i was listening to the three previous speakers before me i was completely humbled by the the vast information uh, that they carry with me and therefore little nervous whether i will be able to do justice to the topic that's been given to me uh, without much ado let me just jump into and share my screen here uh not yet is still yeah we can see now sir yeah okay so the topic that's been given to me um, for today is uh, employee learning is it the end of classroom teaching something very close to my heart and the picture i put here represent all of us uh, those of us who are used to uh, training in the classrooms being surrounded with people and feeding off the energy from the classroom so 
so that's that basically the picture sums up the current uh, feeling that uh, all of us have uh, especially in the training fraternity uh, speaking training coaching lnd hr i speak on behalf of everybody uh, and i think uh, the, the 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 big question is why are we asking this today why are we even talking about whether it's an end of uh, classroom teaching and i uh, would like to believe that this is caused by our friend from china we visited us a uh, couple of months ago and that has kind of turned everything upside down that's kind of uh, forcing us to talk about uh, these things on 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 a different platform now the interesting part in this whole thing if you were to look at time as a continuum uh, the pandemic has brought a line wherein we started thinking about what was and what is meaning we started thinking of everything in a very binary fashion what was earlier and what is currently now we talk about crowded room to what we talk about as a virtual instructor led training which is the VILT. Now, what caught my attention was: uh, Am I still audible and visible? Yes, sir. You are audible. Great, great. What caught my attention was an article uh, which I saw in the Forbes magazine, where uh, they, they, there was an article written by a gentleman which very emphatically said that the corporate education will never return to the classroom. Now, whether it was justified or not, it, it's it's a separate discussion. but the important thing is that uh we need to take a step back and go back into the binary discussion as to why did this happen why did we land up into a situation and for that i'm going to go back to the same thing of what was and what is now the reason why the businesses long back before even the covid started i would say probably a decade and a half back they were looking at exploring opportunities to move out of the classroom session into something very alternate uh, it is an agreed fact that probably the covid pandemic uh, was 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 probably um, a trigger uh, to 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 start this process but the discussion the thought about this had started almost a decade ago and one of the reasons i believe is that uh, the lnd cost pressures were huge and and i'm talking about in the last maybe two decades or so there were market pressures to reduce the cost the manufacturing cost was pushing up and everything was kind of shrinking the margin to top it off the traditional classroom uh, uh, kind of a program had its own inherent faults uh, the travel of uh, of people you know trying to get people from all over uh, all over the place all over the place into into a training room the hotel and the stay the the reward recognition uh, which used to happen in uh, it just used to be a logistic logistical nightmare i mean as trainers and facilitators we would fly in uh, you know from one country to another or maybe one state to another getting everybody together in and there was an opportunity lost the business head used to feel uh, people out for two to three days of uh, leadership program or outbound programs as an opportunity lost uh the the other thing i think is is the businesses did not feel aligned to the training that itself was happening there was there was there was no buy in from the business and last but not the least uh i think as lnd professionals somewhere we missed uh in in defining the roi that the training was giving uh, and aligning that to the business though we had the roi measurements like kirkpatrick model or uh, maybe much later jack philip model but the businesses were really not uh, convinced about the the cost they were spending on on the lnd and coupled with this as i said earlier uh, the huge cost of, uh, of of the economy the economy itself going down or not uh, functioning the way it should be so the 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 thought was already on to start looking at an alternate uh, option uh, of of moving in so uh, the covid pandemic i think uh, only exacerbated the situation only only uh fastened or hastened the process but the the movement was already on um there's another interesting thing that i came about uh, in terms of uh, uh is a slide yeah 
so this is this uh, study done by garter and and uh, what caught my attention here is that uh, it boldly says that there is a lack of skills that's threatening the organization from uh, getting into a digital transformation now uh, radha spoke about digital platform and digital uh, impact and 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 the productivity and measurement but there is a real case in scenario here where the organizations wanting to move into a digital transformation but a lack of skill is preventing them uh, from doing that and the study further on says that most of the companies are flying data blind uh, when when they are trying to uh, look at transformation what is data blind it, it means basically the lnd professionals the hr the, the ceos the leadership team are not looking at the data that's being thrown out or are not uh, using the tools like artificial intelligence or 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 uh, robotics or 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 the other data the, the the big data that's coming in to really understand where the skill gap is or where the skill is lying in uh, 71% of the lnd leaders feel that more than 40% of the workforce has to have new skills uh, post uh, post the covid uh, now talking about the digital transformation there's another inter interesting slide i wanted to share with you now there is there is a c shift that you see uh, in terms of the demand of digital skills if you, if, uh, if if you would look at the uh, the the job posting done by the top 12 countries uh, uh, the the demand of technical skills is not really or is not constrained to the it department if you if you look at this uh, this this yellow big uh, chunk there it's the business areas there is a 106% increase in the number of jobs connected to digital skills or tech skills outside of the it so and and that is across if you see across the spectrum so that's that's a big sea change uh, uh, in terms of the skilling uh, that is required for people so i think the question that we need to ask is do we have the skills uh, either internally or do we have the wherewithal to to drive this digital transformation and and one thing very clearly comes out from this discussion is that to emerge stronger from this covid thing the companies should start looking at reskilling their workforces now now the next question comes in if that being the case how do we start looking at uh, a training uh, for the future for the for, for 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 the for the future world and that brings me to the next point is do we really know who our modern learner is what is the profile of the modern learner which is going to help me to uh, to to design the program uh, the the learning journey for them the modern learner in my opinion is overwhelmed and distracted in a typical day out of the meetings and the emails and all those things they get to spend about 1% that's that's the kind of time that they have 1% uh, is is the time they see, uh, set aside for learning activity 96% of them are glued connected to 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 the phones i mean i would i would even say that they are connected uh, you know to, to to their mobiles almost by umbilical cord and i'm sure a lot of our listeners today are also busy typing messages as 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 the as, as we as, as we are talking and they are uh, checking with their phone almost 10 10 times in an hour that's almost about every 6 minutes there is a need Uh, of fear of missing out so that's the kind of profile of of the of the modern learner that we're talking about they are very very fluent and they're very easy with at least using two uh, devices you know the multi device the, the 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 flexibility of the younger generation is they can they can they 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 can easily operate multi devices now the the this the, the information on the left side that you see it says that they really have just about 7 seconds of attention span which means that as a trainer or as a, a lnd professional if the content that you're offering is not able to catch the attention of the learner in 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 7 seconds uh, then then you know they they are not interested now what does this mean what does it really mean i'm going to i'm going to throw this uh, slide at you and i'm i'm going to say this is the information that's available to you and i'm going to count 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 okay 7 seconds gone in this 7 second if you are not able to assimilate understand comprehend or be interested with this information guess what what's going to happen you've lost it you've lost the trainer you 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 absolutely lost the trainee or or the learner because that's the kind of attention span that they come with they have 67% of the people like to learn on a mobile phone which is no surprising but what is surprising is they would like to have this information when they want it where they want it 
56% of the people want it at the point of need, which means if I have a mobile, I want to learn something, I want it now and here. There are people who might want to learn during their lunch breaks or on, on the journey on commuting back home. These are very intelligent learners. The modern learners know exactly what they want in terms of quality. 76%, that's the kind of number they're looking at quality. Now, what, is, what does it mean to us? Organizations which claim to have LMS, um, the, the good old LMS where you have a repository of PDF or PPT files or some videos, that's not going to work. That's absolutely not going to work. That's not what they're looking at. They are looking at quality content. They, they're looking at uh, clear objectives. They're also looking at it to be timely and relevant to the job. In summary, the modern learner wants uh, a multi-device learning. So if your LMS that you're talking about or your e-learning or virtual learning, if it doesn't support a multi-device learning, uh, then, then you, you you know, losing out a big chunk. But in spite of all this information, it's only 12% of the corporate learning uh, that's, uh, that's currently uh, mobile enabled. Now, virtual learning also has its funny side. Now, you would expect a virtual learning expectations is, but the reality might be something different. That's on the lighter note. Uh, I would like to draw also your attention to something positive. Now, this was a survey done by close to around 2000 L&D professionals by LinkedIn, uh, a professional organization, uh, you know, social media platform. And it threw up very, uh, very interesting uh, data for us to consume on. It says that 37% uh, and three years in a row, 37% of the L&D professionals believe that uh, they would have an increase in their L&D budget, which is a good thing, which means companies and organizations are willing to spend money uh, for, for skilling and upskilling and cross-selling their employees. And 57% of the L&D professionals believe that they're going to be spending on online learning. But what is disturbing is that there is still 24% of the L&D professionals currently do not measure learning engagements. I suspect this data is not of Indian origin. I suspect this is outside of India. In India, um, I, would, I, I, I would unfortunately put this number at least towards 60 to 70%. 70% of the L&D professionals really do not have the measurement tools to, to link, as I mentioned earlier, to ROI to, to the business goals, measurements, employee engagement. Uh, whether they're learning happening or not. And that's, that's the truth. And that has to change very fast. 51% uh, of the L&D uh, plans to upskill and 43% plans to reskill. What is upskilling? Basically learning new skill within the same job function. And reskilling is learning new skills for a different job function. Now, reskilling is very important as far as leadership is concerned because they are bought into it. But what is disturbing also here is that it is not consistent. Leaders say that reskilling is very important, but they're focusing on certain areas only. So if you look at it from a right to a left, uh, areas like legal, uh, legal HR, communication, uh, they, they, the numbers are kind of reducing from 55 uh, percent it goes down to nine to nine percent, nineteen percent. It also might be reflecting the reality what the business um, uh, leaders are focusing on or would like to focus on. But as an LND uh, head or as an LND professional, I would like to see a somewhat more parity in terms of uh, the, the the need or importance for reskilling is concerned. So the world of work is going virtual. And the learning and development has to quickly keep up. Training has changed. The question we need to ask is, are we ready? So that in uh, short and sweet, and I've, I've, I think I've not taken much time. Uh, I, I try to do that fast, but uh, that kind of sums up a global as and, 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 and more of an organizational perspective on where we are in terms of uh, uh, classroom lessons. Oops. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Jeevan. That was really wonderful inside. A lot of data and I think, you know, good learning for all of us because percentage and all this, you know, we are all learner actually. Yes. And we are learning every day, every time, every second. And and earlier, I it used to happen when L&D head used to beg for a budget. 
today it's a reverse way lnd there is a budget do something bring <laughs> lms bring digitalization and all this uh, on an average 50% of uh, workforce uh, it's a reality need uh, you know reskilling and upskilling in every organization and every company is technology company and people need to be technology oriented yeah i uh, like that i like that seven second wala attention system yeah that's a fact that's whether we like it or not that's going to be the hard reality um, for, for for the current and the future correct correct because we are, we are going to have a gig worker people working from home okay. virtual and all this so this all this you know lms uh, lnd ka need to take care of this uh, thank you so much sir i will pause here as far as your session is concerned now let's come to the very interesting session this is going to be different than hr and here is i would call it jaisuriya of hr uh anand sir will tell why i'm ask why i'm telling him jasuriya pechar because there is a story and which i did uh, which i which i heard two three times sir uh, in the past and i'm sure you know you will bring up what what is that story and i'm sure it it would be part of your uh, session as well okay so here is uh, mr anand pillai anand pillai md uh, leadership matters uh and leadership matter has been recognized as one of the top 10 most promising leadership training provider 2019 his big transformation work was in in, in this role where he implemented the employee first customer second very good uh, analogy sir and uh, then strategy to transform scl technology on all four parameter which is revenue profit share value people metrics validating the success of philosophy scl become the fastest growing it service company in the world during 2008 and 9 global financial crisis he has won various hr business leadership award and uh, then in the end let me cover uh, some of the important point he is member of world economic forum global agenda council on new model of leadership 2011 top 5 social media influencer in india and he has been guest lecturer in various business school like howard mit london uh, london business school various ims M- mdi as well what is going to talk about is depression and mindfulness very important thing as far as we in each individual is concerned the two two sides of the same coin how does it affect work so over to you sir and like to hear the jasuri story as well Ashish, I don't know if we'll have time for the Jaisuria story. It's like the flight, you know. I mean, due to the uh, late arrival of the incoming flight, we have to cut short a lot of things. All my predecessors have taken five to six minutes extra. But let's uh, jump straight into the action uh, on uh, this whole topic of depression and mindfulness. I hope all of you can see the screen. Ashish, can you see the screen now? Yes. Corona to Corona. Yeah, wonderful. so when you look at this uh, you know uh, world economic forum uh, united nations and the world health organization has said while corona is the pandemic there is also a shadow pandemic and what is that shadow pandemic the shadow pandemic is depression and mental illness in fact depression and mental illness has taken as many lives as corona itself in a completely different manner recently uh, and there are collateral damages the person can die of heart attack the person can die of uh, uh, some other uh, illnesses or the person even can die of suicide uh, you know recently we were shocked that a very young uh, person in one of the leading automotive companies uh, died of heart attack and that was a shock for all of us in the industry why is this happening and what exactly are we supposed to uh, do in this scenario before i uh, do that let me uh, ask all of you uh, to, i know that all of us are uh, uh, trigger friendly and we want to use our phones so i want you to go to your phone and i want you to answer this question that i am now going to ask on uh, the screen go to www.menti.com all the participants including those participants who are watching this session on facebook uh, live my uh, license for this is uh, you know you can have up to uh, 5000 uh, people uh, participating on this go to www.menti.com and uh, then uh, you can uh, answer uh, this uh, question that i am now uh, going to ask you what is your response to the covid uh, 
uh, situation answer in one word um, ashish can you sir, see the screen uh, yeah 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 sir is there any code for yeah code is 391246 391246 there is there on the screen ashish 46 okay 391246 i want all of you to answer in one word what is your initial response to the covid 19 situation what is your initial response please key in word at a time you can key in up to five words um, all of you was it fear was it panic was it stress what is it anxiety uh, i don't know whether it was depression or was it uncertainty was it complexity what was your initial response to the covid 19 crisis take your phones go to www.menti.com and use the code 391246 and after you keyed in the word uh, hit uh, then some people are answering on the chat please don't answer on the chat answer on the phone okay one person has uh, keyed in excitement you can answer up to five words what was your initial reaction insecure anxiety scared low fear go ahead keep on answering okay fear fear anxiety you see uh, ashish can you see the dynamic nature on the screen the words yes. coming up yes uh, this is interactivity see i mean everybody can talk about training in the post covid world are bas karke dikhao you know i mean it's very important that we bring in interactivity you see all your responses are coming on the screen here and uh, we are sir, not missing sir, one, the classroom interaction so far can i get yes. the request presenter to click on the uh, link because we can just see i can see at least you know only the website address okay the result, result so uh, what do i do milan uh, can you check i think that the uh, presentation is on uh, with whom sir it's uh, if if you click on menti it won't take us to result actually okay one minute let me get it back Okay, while people are asking, if you are if you are having a presentation, yeah, can you can you see the screen now? It's coming up, sir. It's coming up now. Yeah, yeah, it's here now. Yeah, we can see now. Correct. Okay, so nineteen people have answered so far, and um, the one word that is very common is fear, or the second most wo- common word is anxiety. Most. the initial reaction continue please i want everybody to keep on answering don't answer on the chat answer on the phone let us get our uh, mind on to the phone you know um, uh, jeevan was talking about the fact that all of us are trigger friendly while you are watching a particular webinar you want to go on to uh, the phone go on to the phone and do something constructive i have asked you a question what was your initial response to the covid 19 crisis and all that you have to do is go to www.menti.com and key in the code 391246 and you are seeing the responses that are coming already 27 people have answered and the response that is coming is um, and before i go forward uh, ashish you possibly can read out the answers from the chat and uh, i want to ask a question what is the image that is being formed on the screen called anybody can answer what is the image that is formed on the screen called keep on answering while you are uh, getting that anybody gave the answer ashish uh so sorry sir can you repeat what is the what image? is the image that is being formed on the screen called okay so, so sir word cloud thank you answer is correct word cloud what is the significance of the size and the position of these words that are appearing based on the number of responses of the same words it increases fantastic in fantastic yeah, yeah. So majority what of the is word, happening yeah. is out of the 41 odd people who have answered so far what is the one common reaction for everybody fear, fear the yeah. opposite of uh, uh, fear or the side effect of fear is anxiety another side effect of fear is depression everybody has gone into depression everybody has had that uh, thing now i'm going to ask the next question and the next question that i want all of you stay with that 
391246. What was your first response or temptation to the current crisis or lockdown? On your phone, again, go ahead and answer the question. What is your first response or temptation to the current response uh, uh, or uh, crisis or lockdown? You want to spread the sense of urgency or panic or you want to let your emotions drive your uh, response or you want to make assumptions and hope that this is temporary or you want to lay blame on others please don't answer on the chat answer on the phone uh, or you want to lay blame on the others and uh, the company or the country you say, oh, my company has not done well uh, not uh, been prepared or you want to respect your life for the action uh, you got to on your phone please go ahead and answer what was your initial response or uh, the temptation in the crisis and lockdown and once you have done all that uh, hit uh, the uh, submit button and the results will come on the screen ashish is your screen changing yes things are changing 16 people have answered so far yeah. uh, go ahead and answer as you are answering the um, screen will keep on uh, changing this is the dynamic nature of our uh, training and people all over the world uh, and ashish and his team has done a wonderful job in putting this presentation on facebook live uh, so that they are not restricted just to zoom uh, people all over the world are watching this across time zones and they are responding and you see the response uh, here the first response for a large number of people is to introspect their life of 24 people. I want other more responses to come in. Uh, if I look at the presentation, I mean, almost 430 uh, people that are there on Facebook uh, uh, Live, there are uh, a few more hundred uh, people. Keep on answering. Uh, thing. Make assumptions that this is temporary. I also made assumption that this was temporary when it was first announced in uh, the month of uh, February. I thought, okay, uh, lockdown is going to be till March. Then there was lockdown 1.0 uh, till April and then lockdown 2.0, lockdown 3.0, lockdown 4.0. It is going on. <laughs> and I don't know if we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And if we do see the light at the end of the tunnel, it possibly is that of the oncoming train. Uh, so things are not what you think uh, it is. So here we have a situation. Now, of course, most of you are answered. Many of you, uh, this is a time for you to introspect and take responsibility for the action. Now I want to get into the third question and I want everybody to respond. What is your biggest challenge in overcoming or leveraging this crisis? Is it that you're not yet ready for the digital world and the new normal? Or you need to upgrade or polish your skills? Or you have to change your job or your career? Or it was too sudden for you to react? or you do not know what to do, or you think you are stable, but you still need to reflect on your calling. Please answer, give your option. What is your initial uh, biggest challenge in overcoming or leveraging this crisis? Answer on your phone and I will be able, or the software will be able to capture it on the screen. What is your Sir, biggest? It's, it's, uh, it's not getting refreshed. The earlier question is coming, at least in my mobile. Can you please check? Hello? Yeah. Yeah. What were you saying, Ashish? I was lost your voice. Uh, uh, I was saying in my mobile, at least the earlier question is coming. I'm not sure about others. It is not getting refreshed, Ashish. Yeah, yeah, it's not getting refreshed. That's what I'm saying, sir. Can you please check at your end? Okay. I agree with Ashish. It's not uh, refreshing, sir. Can you help us? Yes, let me do that once again. Okay, the internet, I think uh, we are getting more people than we anticipated. More people than we anticipated and therefore uh, that is where the challenge is. So now I've hit the refresh once again. Um, let me see if you can get it now. Can you get it now? It's on. Is it's it refreshed on now? now? Yeah, yeah. It's working okay. now. What is your biggest challenge and overcoming this? What is your biggest challenge in overcoming the crisis? 
Yeah, answers are coming on. Can you see the Ashish? Can you see the screen getting populated? Yeah. Need yes. to upgrade my skills. Jivan yeah. and uh, uh, others will all be happy. Aha, an opportunity. Or oh, not yet ready for the digital world. Okay, I am stable. Some people are saying, okay, I need. Uh, I need to check my career. 16, 18 people have answered. Okay. I need to upgrade my skills. And this is an opportunity for us to do what we can do better. Okay, now I have captured it. I don't want to get onto the internet uh, speed, uh, but let me get into my presentation and talk about. So we all captured the initial response for everybody is uh, fear, anxiety, depression. And you can either be a victim Uh, my uh, presentation here and take things forward. Uh, so this is where we are. So depression was the response. So there are three viruses of mental illness. Ashish, can you see the slide? The three virus of mental illness, uh, worry and anxiety, uh, fear and depression. What is a, a virus is basically something that replicates itself rapidly uh, and uh, really becomes so numerous that you don't have any control over it. So during this shadow pandemic, worry can multiply itself and anxiety can multiply itself and show itself in fear and uh, in depression. What do you need to do? You need to have one. forward. Uh, so shift your focus from depression to mindfulness. When you think about a problem over and over again, that is called worry. When you think about a solution over and over again, that is called meditation or mindfulness. If you know how to worry, you already know how to meditate. You basically need to shift the object of your meditation on. And that is what we need to get. How do you overcome fear? Overcoming fear, uh, fear has got a big impact. You know, fear can um, uh, make your heart rate increase, which is the reason why people are getting heart attack during the situation. Fear can make your blood pressure increase. Uh, even if you don't have high blood pressure under the COVID situation, because of the fear, your blood pressure can increase. Fear can also make your blood sugar level uh, increase, which is the reason why even a person under normal circumstances, if he or she is not diabetic, can diabetic fear can shut down the digestive and immune system, which makes the person vulnerable for attacks. Fear can also make the person uh, have trouble in focusing on small tasks. And that uh, can lead to depression, which can lead to inactivity, sadness, and sometimes even suicidal tendencies. Organizations now shifting the focus and creating a department called Employee Wellness Department. And I'm sure Ashish and others will agree that employee wellness is now becoming a mandated or a regulated department, which means if a particular organization does not have employee wellness, that organization is liable for action. And we need to understand what is it that is causing people to get into depression. Well, people can have a psychological uh, or physiological imbalance. People can have stress or the environment can lead into uh, depression or a situation or the situation like uh, COVID can lead them into uh, depression or the thinking can lead into depression. But the answer to all this is take charge and be an entrepreneur, entrepreneur take charge and have these four qualities uh, that I uh, talk about. Have that ability to have passion. Passion is what is going to help you overcome your depression, your mindset has to change from this is a problem that is here to stay to convert this. This is an opportunity that we can leverage. Learn to manage ambiguity with the help of colleagues, with the help of your company wellness department. Get into the details. How can you break down the complex task into smaller activities? And what is it that you can learn from the situation? These are five things that you can definitely do. And I want to tell you one thing. Don't focus on increasing knowledge. I teach a lot of B-School students. 
If knowledge is power, librarians will rule the world. And therefore, I come to my final uh, slide or my final uh, thing. Don't think that if you can plan to do, you can get it done. I talk to a lot of people and they say, I want to do it. And I say KKDS. And some people uh, come and say, I also wish to do it. And I say KKDS. Some people say, we, uh, we desire to do it. And I say KKDS. During this Corona time, what was the slide? title that I have from Corona, move to Corona. So if you say you want to do it, KKDS. If you're planning to do it, KKDS. If you wish to do it, KKDS. What on earth is KKDS? Karkadikau Sala. If you don't like your brother-in-law, no problem. You can say Karkadikau Sir, Karkadikau Sahib, or for my Punjabi friends, I say Karkadikau Sonu Putter. Get into action. The best way to de beat depression is do something. And that's the reason why I really like my favorite shoes, Nike. Don't talk about it. Don't dream about it. Don't even think about it. Just do it. Overcome depression by getting into action. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. When, when you started initially, we thought, you know, uh, we, we were worried, okay, what's happening and all, but when you end up, you know, it becomes so inspiring and motivated. And, and yes, you rightly said knowledge is only not the power, but how do you implement, utilize the most important? Take care of yourself. It's life is in only in your hand. You can make that a uh, lot of change in you or somewhere else. So, so, sir, wonderful session. I will go to the immediately next session. Yes, uh, we are running out of time. Here is the next speaker. She is not only a friend of mine, but she is a friend of uh, HR Shaper, uh, very, very well-known HR leader. And she is all the way, will be talking to us from Singapore. And the topic is different than like what everybody has spoken, which is uh, like, you know, uh, the subject is the topic, I, what I mean to say is time and result, the new two aggravated problem areas of work management. I would like to hear from uh, our speaker that, you know, what she's going to talk about it. So let me read the profile here. Uh, okay, so here is the Kangan, HR Director, EPEC, Entity Cloud Communication Singapore. She is a strategic and innovative HR executive who translates business vision into HR initiative that improve performance, profitability, growth, and employee engagement. She is trusted advisor to the business leader who thrive on tough challenges, translate vision and strategy into actionable, value-added goals. And uh, she has vast experience of working in MNC International NGO in Asia, UK, USA, and her one, uh, one of the recent key achievements has been transforming HR into true strategic business partner. Uh, end to end HR is restructuring champion, champion HR vision while forging sustainable HR infrastructure system processes practices. So over to you, I would like to hear on a very, very different topic. And this is the last session. Be ready for question answer, everybody. And thanks, organizer, for bringing different kind of speaker and topic. Hi, Ashish. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Ashish, for your kind words and giving me the opportunity uh, to share my thoughts with other esteemed panel members here. Uh, this is, uh, there is so much of wisdom in this room that I'm completely mesmerized. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Kage, for hosting this uh, virtual webcast. I really appreciate it. I, I will try my best to share my thoughts on the topic that is given to me today on uh, time results, the two aggravated problem areas of work management. We will start, uh, we started with the, the new decade. Uh, typically, it started with a lot of optimism and hope. Uh, we then quickly saw this world came to a standstill uh, earlier this year. Uh, we were confronted by something that is unprecedented for both public health, economic crisis, as well as systemic issues on racial injustice inequality, but we all confronted this by becoming more resilient. Uh, we've changed and transformed the way we do our business, the way we shop, uh, we learn, and we work. We have lost many things uh, during this time, uh, but many things that we have gained as well. It is critical uh, that we maintain to have a balance between optimal productivity and employee well-being. Through this large scale experiment of remote working, I have few statistics to share with you uh, in my last, uh, next slide. Uh, thank you, Mansoor. 
there has been a research uh, so around uh, you know with the accenture data i uh, i got to know that 46% of people who never worked from home previously now plan to work from home often in the future 25.3% cited un manageable workload as the main stress in their current uh, life 61% of the res responders said that they are burning out uh, on the job and the key reason that has been cited is because of the blurring boundaries of personal and professional lives also while we are having a currently a virtual video meeting video meeting there has been a research as well that our brain concentrate more and carry a higher cognitive load uh, in during these video meetings with all of these uh, not so great statistics around the new normal we also have linkedin reports saying that there, there is an in three times increase in linkedin learning during this time so it's an interesting statistic uh, while we have got uh, many esteemed speakers talked about the new learning strategy but people are getting very very aware of uh, upskilling themselves and being ready and geared up for the new future there are stat these statistics share that we have all responded to this crisis differently and it is important that we are prepared for tomorrow to be more resilient and be ready for the new normal that we call it these days while we navigate through the paradox uh, which could be around uh, taking care of individuals versus attending to the organization needs resilience from the past versus aspiration for the future i would like to share with you three dimensions that i have come up after looking at various research papers talking to my friends around the same fraternity as well as looking at some best practices which are in the next slide thank you mansoor the three key dimensions are respond recover and reimagine respond as the first dimension has few building blocks while we are all responding to this dis disruption very very differently some see this as a threat and some see this as an opportunity as hr we have focused a lot on getting real time insights for employee safety local government guidelines continuous scanning of best practices in our in our own ecosystem and our experience range varies quite widely personalizing the approach to foster a culture and enabling change has proven helpful at least to me and driving new mindsets and behavior and making better and quicker decision consultative decision as we all know and we are quite aware by now that one size does not fit all organizations have thrown the multi year strategy off the shelf and have adopted the strategy sprint approach which helps the which helps in communicating a story uh, of purpose that binds us together the values that we create in our daily lives i'll share an example from my own company ntt cloud communication while this pandemic hit we had to put in place short term strategy which ensured safety and security of our workforce as a key priority at the same time we being a part of the essential service we it was important to ignite the core uh, purpose and the values that bind us together so that we can support our customers and be more efficient in the more, most efficient way to transition and to activate successfully their bcp plans with the support of cloud collaboration tools the second dimension that i want to talk about is recover recover is all about bounce back harness that uncertainty redefining our boundaries of work with aligned purpose it it leads me to prepare an agile workforce which is able to adapt and be ready to reskill their capabilities to support the new norm this can be achieved with the right mindset with clear prioritization expectation continuous communication i think we've talked about enough and we've read enough on continuous communication that is currently the key in remote management and lastly and most importantly with fading personal and professional uh, boundaries it is important that we time box your hour work 
time boxes i've tried this personally it does it does not guarantee you that you will finish the work in the allocated time but however it does definitely help you to focus and to be more efficient and productive the third dimension that i have uh, is reimagine reimagine is as now we have we have all demonstrated that most of our jobs can be uh, worked remotely with the help of technology right collaboration tools and right guidance and prioritization we have all started to reimagine a workplace which is modern smarter and intelligent to increase the efficiency and enhance customer experience through seamless processes as organizations uh, reconstruct this and think about and identify positions what can be done remotely what are the roles that can be carried out in person and to what degree a lot of more models are out there to uh, share more data whether it's a hybrid model or fully work from home model uh, there is a fresh, refresh look on resizing the footprints creatively also i would like to say that with the work life balance as a terminology in my view it is history now we all should focus on creating our own right balance and as we prepare for the future uh, we will be creative in our approach to reimagine a more uh, inclusive culture focused on purpose and values which will lead us to right results and uh, like i said do more in less time with better results thank you so much uh, ashish and for all the other mem uh, panel members and all the audience to hear me be safe and be resilient thank you thank you thank you gangan uh, you know sharing a lot of insight valuable insight all the from singapore you know the different topic different uh, speech yes so thanks all speaker you know six speaker and 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 they are they are still there thank you so much we have a lot of question line up for you and before that uh, you know i like to thank you know in <laughs> in case i am able to forget all our partner you know nipm raigarh then we have confederation of indian uh, micro small and medium enterprise and soul and connect uh, who's mental wellness partner and then then none other than the 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 organizer and the person behind this as far as i know milan but uh, you know there are a lot of people who worked on this to make it happen so kagar he talks a community of real uh, re relators and real estate enthusiasts who believe in sharing knowledge discussing problem understanding trend enabling learning or learning obsolete leveraging technology and creating network of empowered reality business leader equally equipped stakeholders so thanks milan once again all your team member to make it happen now our q and a session will start i'm sure many of you have posted the q and a uh, question in uh, q and a box let me pick up uh, so i will start with the you know uh, rajan sir uh, first uh, because sir you you talk about work from home and all yeah, there are challenges as well uh, organization also you know struggling that okay how do we measure the productivity can we one is your measurement of the productivity second is you know can we really increase the productivity is there any way because you know there are a lot of destruction happening we have we have heard from you that many people even can't work from home yeah so any input on this how to increase the productivity how to measure the productivity while somebody working from home some discipline will have to be brought in by people that work from home i have traditionally been a manufacturing person and i would enter the factory at 8 am in the morning to 5 pm and work throughout and never stay back or work on a weekend but during that time i would always work now given that one wants to look at productivity from home there can't be supervision that you can continuously monitor because you have to leave tasks to people to perform but individuals will have to learn some self discipline one is i must start in time and end in time whatever assignment i have to do one should also formally dress up the way one would go to office or work rather than be there take your legitimate breaks that are there for lunch and coffee and not any time there can be a flexi time concept i'm not saying but one will have to really work with a the discipline there are two angles in work from home 
one is those that are interacting with somebody there is a response but when i am not interacting with somebody i am doing individually now when i am doing individually unless i built up a discipline myself it is not going to operate and you can keep i mean i also recollect you know when the covid started on 25th march the first 21 days i took it also as a holiday and relax that this now vacation time but when it continued then you get in terms of a structure to do this at the same time i would say don't skip your lunch break other is something which somebody brought out there's a tendency for people to look at their mobile every 10 minutes or be disturbed i don't respond to people's mobiles immediately i look at a particular time and respond to people's email now this culture of 24 by 7 being contacted also needs to change second part on work from home and i am bringing this angle there are females that are working from home you cannot be phoning them at wrong hours and asking questions unless it's an emergency also organizations will have to take this because women have to look after their family they are working from home and i think bosses will also have to be sensitive i understand in an emergency contacting anybody at a particular time or send a message saying that please contact me when it is convenient so somewhere discipline on either side will have to be built in for work from home because this is a reality one does not know how long the pandemic will last covid 19 while the seminar team is post covid 19 unless a vaccine comes it looks like a type of work environment that's likely to prevail and yes people need to improve their productivity at the same time organizations will also have to measure out what people are now there will be some people that will not monitoring mechanism will have to be brought in but yes i think we'll have to delegate and believe on people because all said and done it's an individual working based on what you are given some of this is easier done in terms of service sector and others manufacturing will have its own problems on work from home because whatever you can decentralize and get it done by all means i'll tell you another problem when you look at work from home field force in the farm industry never had an office every town you don't have a office the field force invariably work from home and when i look at medical reps calling on doctors now what is going to happen earlier medical reps used to travel and call upon doctors doctors also today because of covid 19 don't want to meet the medical rep now he'll have to make a call and then follow up and he will have to follow up because he has to prescribe certain things or try and promote their product so there are going to be normally for productivity measurement you set certain targets with people so much volume of sales i'll get with territory so many doctors you'll call upon so many chemists you'll meet now in field force also there are these concepts that are there given that premise we'll have to also set target but i think we'll have to be fair the other point was which radha krishnan pillai brought about tam dam dand bhed if there are people sitting at home not doing the work and not giving you results also you'll have to look at it what do you do with them because this is another problem that can happen and say sir i tried but nothing came at the end of the day business has to get results also so i think it is mutual and people will work out i must say today you can see in the education sector schools have started looking in terms of children and trying to monitor but they are not able to take the complete full day class even if it is half day they try to monitor that children are paying attention and listening so they ask questions something which was done by one of the speakers also getting the audience involved now while the number of participants would have been fairly high but hard about 40 people participated so this also reflects to you how many are getting into it so where my own hunch is given the way technology is moving mechanisms will also be found to look at how people are thank you thank you sir i think your self discipline is the key and yes uh, one size doesn't fit all ecosystem has to be ready for all of us to perform very different question coming and i would like to start from radha then move to jeevan and uh, anand and jeevan there is one post uh, one question posted for you you can just read it and then we'll come to you next 
the question is coming and it's a very common problem especially for businessmen that how do we utilize the assets more efficiently during this covid because you know big office uh, maybe they are not open right uh, so so uh, dada any anything from tenakanithi that you know this can be answered how do you utilize the you know assets infrastructure dada you are able to hear us okay i think uh, the some issue uh, so let me start with anun sir anything you any input you like to give the how to utilize the office assets because they are not you know in the use yeah see uh, uh, one of the things that many of the companies are doing uh, is uh, consolidating their office assets um, you know for example hcl technologies which had variety of uh, delivery center they are consolidating it some of them are converting this as an opportunity for csr uh, they're even doing this as a co uh, temporary unit having said that uh, the real estate sector is actually got a skewed impact on the one side office assets are getting consolidated on another side, for example in our own apartment complex there are many people who are moving from a two bedroom to a three bedroom house uh, renting a uh, three bedroom to a four bedroom and so on and dedicating one bedroom extra for um, uh, work from home because it's going to be a nightmare for you to really be at home where the husband wife and the children are also having school from home so consolidating assets at home expanding the assets and in the office also at any point in time uh, the office is uh, going to get consolidated whether you like it or not this work from home is not a covid phenomenon uh, ashish if you remember about uh, 10 15 years ago ibm and other companies had the work from home policy capgemini itself had a work from home policy in fact they used to give an extra allowance to the employees to work from home there are certain um uh, sectors where work from home is far more productive than working uh, from the office so office uh, what we would call the per square foot area per person uh, will actually be recalculated uh, consolidate that and get into what we would call google type of offices uh, where your work and play is all integrated in fact in fact i have seen you know most of the hotels they are converting into hospital bed for yes. a temporary situation till the covid happen correct and, and and most of the hotel they are planning to have a small set of where you know if i cannot work from home because of limitation at home and all i can go and just you know company can pay the rent there and then work from so we work will be coming back actually they are becoming country. temporary business centers you're yes. right yes which may be near to your place you don't need to go to even you know travel and all good so jivan sir there is one question in case you read it uh, uh, there is a question that how this pandemic situation is related to employee learning in their organization in a financial way uh, or employee welfare how it is affected excellent excellent question um, and uh, it reminds me of a cartoon which has been floating around uh, for quite some time where the cfo asks the ceo what happens when we train the employees and they quit and he asks what happens if we don't train them and they stay Uh, and it's a very very important and hard hitting thing i think even in good old days uh, the lnd function was the most affected and uh, those of us who have been in the hr fraternity would know every time there is a cost cutting or a budget constraint the first casualty would always be the training department ye training band kar do don't have that and all those things so skill uh, upgrading skill has always uh, taken a back seat uh, in the traditional way uh i think during the covid or the pandemic this is more important now because organization is going through a transformation it's not a change it's a transformation and that's likely to say and this is a time where you should be investing into uh, developing the skills of the employees uh, investing into upskilling uh, cross skilling uh, and and making sure that uh, you're ready for uh, for for the next uh, uh jump because learnability in my opinion is going to be the most sought after skill um for for employees in in the in 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 the days and the years to come because how fast are you able to hit the ground running how fast are you uh, able to manage change so therefore uh, skilling the employees constantly is absolutely essential so uh, i hope that answers the question yeah in fact you know there is another cartoon which is like you know okay who brought the digitalization ceo cio cto 
CHRO, CFO, no, it's a COVID actually. Yeah, so very good analogy of that, you know, if you don't train, what will happen? You know, you'll get bad people and uh, downwards productivity. Thank you, Jeevan. Uh, okay, so here is one question. I want to, I want input from Jashri and uh, Kangan. Just because, you know, the question related to I'm putting is more of uh, DNI. DNI actually has taken a back seat because of the COVID, because there are different priorities. So do you see any negative impact or, you know, something has to be taken on the priorities, which is, which should be related with the DNI in the organization. So question to Jashri and Kangan. Rest of them can also give the input. This is the last question. We are running short of time. Uh, can Kangana want to take first? Kangan, sorry, not Kangan. Kangan. Yeah, Kangan. Kangan, you are there? Kangan, are you there? Kangan, are you there? Okay, I think she is not able to hear us. Uh, she may come back. So, uh, I think she is on mute. She so, is on mute. Uh, I think a lot of uh, shifts are happening, and basically, though it is, uh, we are talking about many. How can we bring the cultural shift? It all again rotated to cultural shift because how you take uh, it as a challenge and opportunity, as Mr. Anand Pillai rightly mentioned, it was very fantastic how he, how you are taking this. And then whatever things are coming, it can be a change scenario and we have to work around this. We have to accept this as a challenge and whatever uh, shifts are coming, we have to adopt those changes, uh, maybe at your workplace, maybe at your uh, family front. But while doing that, you need to develop yourself to bring that uh, mindset uh, in ourselves. And that will help us to cope up with this scenario. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, so uh, let me take one more question because Kangan, you are there. In case you are there, please uh, just uh, shout us. Uh, okay, so here is the one question I'm taking now. Uh, Milan. Uh, Milan, uh, we are just standing now. Okay, so here is coming from Ajit, which is, what is your take on passing the advantage of saving infrastructure, maintenance, travel, cafeteria costs to employees who work from home? Uh, anybody uh, like can to... You, can you just repeat it? I, uh, I okay, have... so it, the question is, what is your take on passing on the advantage of saving? So it's related to the cost saving because organization not working, so there is a lot of cost saving happening you know, travel cost, maintenance cost, electricity cost, cafeteria services, and many of the uh, services which employ, uh, employer were paying, you know, it is not being paid and all. To the employee who work from home. So how the company, basically what he may be trying to say, that how the company is, uh, you know, utilizing that money, because money is being saved somewhere else also, you know. Uh, uh, let me let me ask uh, Radha. Radha, you are there? Anything from Chanakya PW? Yeah, yes, Ashish. In fact, that's a very beautiful question. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah, very much. Yeah, okay. I think it all from Chanakya's angle depends on the leadership. See, suppose you made uh, you know a saving of let's say ten rupees, okay, and your expenses have uh, gone down by five rupees. So what happens is that final, finally it's a call that the leader has to take. Two, three things he can do, maybe pass it on to the employees uh, or pass it on to the shareholders and show, you know, we have given so much dividends to you. So they also feel very happy. Maybe the stock market rating goes up. Or the third thing probably HR guys can fight for is larger budgets because the same travel budgets would have come down and say, you know, let us have more budgets for it. So I think it's a very clear leadership calls. Because even if you look at the kind of a job uh, people are losing, it's also a leadership call. We re realize people saying that this is the time to you know cut down people. So you are right. At one end, there will be cost coming down. And Chanakya would clearly tell this, you know, Artha Eva Pradhana, which I told in my keynote address also, that finally it's going to be a financial call. My only worry, and probably that's what I'm saying, that please don't take decisions only uh, given by the CFO. Now, I'm not against the CFOs, but you know, CFOs are number driven guys, but a CEO has to include the decisions along with the CFO. Because see what happens, it's a mindset, you know, HR persons are trained to look at HR, 
CFOs are look, uh, trained to look at numbers. Marketing guys will only think about sales. But a CEO has to say, okay, finance guy is important, but is he only having a that dimension? So I think uh, the data statistics is going to be there with the CFO. He will talk about cost cutting. Marketing will talk about more revenue. But I think one very important dimension we are missing is that the inflation is going to go up. I don't know whether you start, started realizing that the post-COVID era is going to have a lot of inflation. So I think you should also take into factor that your inflation level has to be matched because those people who are going to be there, the salaries have to be high. If not in one year, it is not just going to be incremental or a normal inflation hike. So it's like 10% is generally done. But what I'm saying is that the, 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 the whole thing. So I would say what you said, Ashish, in the beginning also, it's going to take one year for people to stabilize. So at one year, it's one time it has to be cost cutting, cost saving. But the leader has to take a final call to give it back to the people, invest in training or maybe give it back to the shareholders and show that, you know, my ratings has gone up. It's a leadership call. Yeah, yeah, I think rather that so that that I can I can take the liberty that he, this was the closing remark and I will request other to also do it. But before that, I like to say money is being saved by many companies. At the same time, they are investing also in digitalization. <coughs> many of the mental and health initiative people are uh, employer are actually going beyond and supporting the employee at this point of time. Sir, closing remark from each one of you. Rather has done it just now. Within uh, within ten seconds, any inspiring word which can motivate our delegate, uh, uh, which can motivate our audience uh, on this call. Yeah, I'll just like to make a mention. When the cost reduction was taken, you have to recognize closing the remark from our side is. I said there are companies where the pie is shrinking also, so you'll have to see that have, what is the fall in my revenue, and how have I done to readjust to survive the business because there are quite a few sectors where let me tell you the incomes have fallen to less than 50% and given 2021 so they have to look at various cost cutting measures and they need to so you need to look in totality because the pie is also shrinking for a lot of businesses it is not that the pie is remaining the same or it is expanding which is spoken when a pie is shrinking the approaches have to be very different to look in totality for the business. This is what I would make a statement. At the same time, one will also have to ensure that because people have to are not in a position to come to work, I think the greatest fear is what happens if I get COVID and if I die. Let me make this statement. And this is the most important point I look from an employee perspective. It is nice to keep on reading in the news magazine and saying, that you know, immunity has gone up, mortality rate is 3%, 4%. Please be clear, it is not a statistical analysis. And this is something that the companies will have to look in terms of welfare, because I was looking. What is my welfare to employees that get infected with COVID? And what happens to my employees that die if it takes place? And I would look at this as to be heard by the employer to look after his people. Because let's be fair that COVID can happen to anybody. Let me tell you the employment model, the way it is changing in large number of enterprises. Companies that are going for shutdown in contract labor are only engaging people that are below 40 or 45 to come for work and not taking pillows beyond that so that the probability of getting infected comes down. Business decisions are taken in terms of how you safeguard people's lives. And it is true that somebody will get infected. It will also happen somebody may die and what is the company's approach? This would be my first point that I would look at insurance, I look at safety for them while I look in terms of it, but if they die or something is infected, I look at the funding for it. Thank I will you. do cost saving, yeah. but I'm not going to part in terms of giving income to people. I will try to look at welfare for all the employees, irrespective of whether they are contract labor or whether they are executives. Let me tell you, there have been IR problems with a lot of companies. When you get down to the interiors of India, we try and see how businesses operate rather than our looking. Most of us who are working from home, please be clear, we are safeguarding our life from death. Those who go around delivering all that material which comes in our house are risking their lives. And this is what we will have to take a lesson. 
yes sir 100% as as we said you know it's a luxury for metro city guys but you know it's it's a different reality so so closing remark from each four of you start with jayshri anand kangan and jivan anything in general related to the topic in just less than 10 seconds jayshri Uh, can you please repeat because I, there was a okay my... i am yeah yeah i am asking closing remark anything in 10 second you know which you like to you know yeah surely uh, so thank you very much ashish uh, and i also thanks and welcome all the co panelists the thank you uh, closing remark i can say ki we now have to leave this with uh, pandemic situation of covid with learning new norms and uh, to go ahead with the challenge we should look at it as a an opportunity rather going into any stress or uh, depression thank you thank you so over to anand ji yeah the closing remark is basically i have two statements one is at a situation like this choose direction over distance don't worry about how much distance you are covered just look at it you may be in a situation to reorient yourself re um, direct yourself choose direction over distance that's the first thing the second one is understand and realize that the covid situation has affected you it has affected somebody else also so the men are differentiated from the boys and this is a metaphorical statement in the common factor for everybody into an opportunity to for the benefit of everybody not just for yourself choose to get into a largeness thinking how can you convert this problem into an opportunity so that everybody who is affected will be shielded from that rather than yourself thank you thank you sir so those go with the flow do your best got the message kangan thank you sashish um, i would just say uh, we are in it together and uh, give that leap of put that you know have that leap of faith and dive into it just do it uh, like uh, you know one of the panel members said karke dikha sala and also give that helping hand to somebody who is diving into depression and you know uh, into activities which are uh, not uh, you know good for the community thank you so much ashish yeah we need to work as a community help each other great so last one is uh, divan Yeah, the <clears throat> only remarks that i wanted to uh, make is that as business leaders business managers we need to understand that the only thing that organizations succeed globally is the skills that it has uh, within within its realm uh, about the employees it's not the it's not uh, uh, the tools it's not the investment it's not uh, anything else but the 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 skills that the employees carry uh, to take it forward so look after your employees skill them keep them up to date keep them sharp keep them ready for the future yeah got the message like learning never end yeah that's so so now thank you each one of you for for uh, spending your time with us for two two hours now milan i'm 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 sure you know you are waiting for you know closing uh, remark and the vote of thanks so what up thanks you know will be given by milan uh, uh, yes milan uh, before we wind up you are a fantastic moderator thank you so much for that my pleasure milan you are on mute yes Yeah, you can hear me. I'm audible. Yeah. So first of all, thank you very much to all of you, all dignitary heads. Uh, you are audible. Yes, yes. Very nice session, especially Radha Krishnan sir, Rajan sir, Jayshree Madam, Kanjan, Kangan, Anand sir, and my favorite Jivan sir. Yes. So I just want to say that. Uh, Uh, thanks for your valuable time, and in future also we'll collaborate. And uh, uh, last uh, for the our audience, I will say only one thing: uh, before you give up, just speak up. Before you give up, just speak up. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, and uh, last to our uh, our HR friend Ashish. Thank you. So thank you, Mila. You have been so nice, wonderful. Yeah, we'll. Uh, thanks to all. Yes. We'll we'll wait for old normal and play all the games. You know. Yes, yes. Radha, Radha, get up, get Radha. I see some games playing with you. Thank you, Ishan. Thank you very much. Bye, bye. Good night. Good night. Take care. Take care. Take care. Thank you, everyone.